Within this short video, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of creating a function within the Oracle Cloud. To get started, we'll select Developer Services and then select Applications within Functions. We'll then select Create Application. And once this screen loads, we'll give our application a name. In this example, I'm calling it simply My Function App. I'll leave the default VCN in place and I'll put this into my public subnet. Um, for the shape, I'll just choose an x86 machine and then I'll create the application. Once the application's been created, the next step for me is to configure it. So if I select the cloud shell setup, it means I can do everything within the browser, which make life a little bit easier. So if I hit launch cloud shell, the cloud shell should open with my within my browser and I can then also see a list of instructions to get started with creating my first function within Oracle. First step is for me to set my context to my current location, which is UK South. Once I've done that, I need to update the context with the functions compartment ID. As you can see, that's provided within the user interface, so you don't need to poke around to obtain that. The next step is to create a repository name prefix for where your code will be stored. So all I'm simply doing here is just changing the repo name prefix. And what I'll do is just give it exactly the same name as the name of my function app, just to keep things nice and simple and easy to follow. Now, once that's been created, the next thing I need to do is to create an authentication token, which I've done already in the background. If you click that, it'll allow you to quickly create one. I then need to log into Docker image repository uh, using those credentials. So I'll pop in the string that's provided there with the details of uh, my Docker logging, and then I'll paste in my passwords from my authentication token that I created previously. Now, once that's been done, I can now list the function apps that I have available. And what we should see here is the My Function app that I've literally just created. What I'm then going to do is to create my first function. Rather than using the boilerplate code that's available here, I'm going to create my own function app that uses a Python runtime, which is my language of choice. And I'm going to give this name exercises because my function app will provide a list of exercises. What I'll then do is cd into the exercises directory that's been created for my function. And then we can see the boilerplate code that's provided. So there's a function.py file, which has got some boilerplate code for some hello well type function. What I'll then do is launch the code editor. Again, this runs completely within a web browser looks very similar to Visual Studio Code. And what I'll do from here is I will open the boilerplate file that's been provided and update it with my own code. Now the code that I'm going to copy in here is an adaption of an Azure function I created some time ago, which essentially you pass it a number of exercises and from a list of exercises that it has, it generates a random list for you to do for a workout routine. So what we'll do is replace the boilerplate code that's provided for the standard out the box Python function. And we replace this with a function that I've created. And as you can see here, there's a single function called handler. Um, within that, there's a list of exercises. Uh, we will save that. What we then do is open up the functional.yaml file that's got the configuration for the specific function. And as you can see on line seven, we've got the entry point, which basically tells it which function to call within the function um, when it's actually called. So in this specific case, it's handler. Now that we've saved the updated function that we have, we then need to move on to deploy it. And what we'll do is firstly make sure that we're in the directory where the function code is contained, then do fn minus v deploy app, give it the name of the function app. 
in this case my function app, hit return, then it'll work its magic in the background creating a uh, Docker container, copying the code to that and having that ready to launch. The next thing that we'll do once that is completed is we will then look to invoke the function. So what we do is we take a value from the body, get that, which is the maximum number of exercises, and then for the range of zero to that maximum number, select a random list of exercises from the exercise list. So what we'll do here is we will invoke the function with a maximum of four exercises provided. Passing it the name of the function app and the function within it that we want to call. We can see we're echoing the value in that we want, which is max number of four exercises passed in the JSON format. That'll take some time to run the first time because the container needs to be spun up. And eventually it should come back with a list of four random exercises from the list of exercises within the exercises list. See, that took quite some time. What we'll do is we'll run that command quickly again, but instead of asking for four exercises, we'll ask for eight. And when we run this, it should return a lot quicker. So there you go. As you can see, that's returned very quickly.